Alrighty, so, uh, welcome to Historian Stitch. So, over the past couple days, I've been getting a lot of questions about my sewing machine, my treadle machine, mind you, uh, well, the only one I use at this point, um, and, like, where do you get the bobbins if you need more, and where do you get the needles, and things like that. So, First and foremost, if you know the kind of machine you have and roughly the year, you can get the bobbins online. You have to be careful, because some of them are going to be longer than the shuttle, some of them could be shorter, uh, mine are roughly an inch. So I, when I'm looking at things, I'll go to the description and I'll make sure I look for that. But there's also a factor here of two of them usually enough, at least for me, because that's about how much thread I need to get through at least most of a project. Maybe not all of it, but most of it. When it comes to my needles, <sighs> I broke one yesterday, so I know this one pretty well at this point. Um, I use regular modern sewing needles, like sewing machine needles. So, I tend to stick with the denim ones, just because with the materials that I'm typically working with, the thicker, heavier needles kind of do a little bit better for me. But, the problem is, modern needles are a little bit shorter than historic ones. So, here's how I, here's how I get around that. Here is my troubleshoot. <laughs> Alright, so I've already got my needle in here, uh, but the way that I do, the way I get it long enough to where it should be is I will, instead of pushing the needle all the way up into that channel, I will leave it down a little bit, tighten it up, test it to make sure that it actually catches in, catches around the shuttle itself. So the way it should work is it goes all the way down and that thread will loop around that shuttle and back up. So you have to play with it a little bit because in theory you're not breaking your needles all that often, but even if you do it every single time that you make something, you're still gonna have to kind of finagle with it because some needles, even modern, are going to be a little bit different sizing depending on where you're getting them from. So that's my troubleshoot for it. Uh, it's mainly just a play around with it. The biggest thing, make sure that the eye of your needle is not facing you. For historic machines, the eye of the needle should be facing this way instead of this way. So that's a pretty big <laughs> thing that you have to get right to. But past that point, I get all of my stuff from modern places at this point. I do not use historic ones. There is a finite amount of historic sewing machine needles. There is a finite amount of historic bobbins, too, and shuttles. So, there are some companies that you can get through, like, Etsy and Amazon, where you can get those shuttles and stuff. Um, but, past that point, you just gotta make sure you're reading through the descriptions of what you're about to buy. Make sure it's the right thing before you bring it home. <laughs> but yeah, that's a little bit more about my sewing machine here. And here eventually, I will be making at least an apple cream pie. Not exactly the historic uh, morning foods that we were originally talking about, but it's a pie nonetheless. It's the time of year for it. So... That'll be tomorrow's task, and eventually I will get around to that raisin pie. So, yeah, I'll see y'all next time. Bye. <laughs>